In this question, we have been given that alpha, beta, gamma are the roots of the equation given by x cubed minus 3x plus 7 equal to 0. Then we have to frame an equation whose roots are given by alpha plus beta minus gamma, beta plus gamma minus alpha, and gamma plus alpha minus beta. All right. So this is the equation given to us in the question and it's given that this equation has three roots, alpha, beta and gamma. And we have to frame an equation whose roots are given by alpha plus beta minus gamma, beta plus gamma minus alpha and gamma plus alpha minus beta. All right. Now, if you closely observe the equation given to us in the question, you will see that there is no term of x squared. If there is no term of x squared, the sum of the roots taken one at a time will be zero. That means alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to zero. Now, if I subtract two gamma from both sides of the equation, what I'll get is alpha plus beta minus gamma is equal to minus two gamma. Similarly, we'll get beta plus gamma minus alpha is equal to minus two alpha and gamma plus alpha minus beta is equal to minus two beta. All right. Now we have to frame an equation whose roots are given by minus two gamma minus two alpha and minus two beta. So this is the equation given to us in the question. Now we have to frame an equation whose roots are given by minus two gamma, minus two alpha and minus two beta. So we'll substitute y is equal to minus two x. If y is equal to minus two x, x is equal to minus y by two. Now we are going to put the value of x as minus y by two in the equation x cubed minus three x plus seven equal to zero. So what we'll get is, negative y by 2 whole cube minus 3 multiplied by negative y by 2 plus 7 equal to 0. Now if I simplify it further, I'll get negative y cube divided by 8 plus 3y divided by 2 plus 7 equal to 0. Now if we take LCM and LCM would be 8, what we'll get is minus y cube plus 12y plus 56 is equal to 0, all right? Now, as you can see that the coefficient of y cube is minus 1. So I'm going to multiply this equation with minus 1 so that the coefficient of y cube becomes 1, all right? So what I'll get is y cube minus 12y minus 56 is equal to 0. Now, in the options, we do not have an equation in y, but we do have an equation in x. So what we'll replace is, we'll replace y with x, and what we'll get is x cubed minus 12x minus 56 equal to 0, and that is our required equation, which is option A here. So in this question, we have been given that if x squared minus 3x plus 2 is a factor of x raised to power 4 minus ax squared plus b, then we have to form an equation whose roots are a and b. All right. So we have been given that x squared minus 3x plus 2 is a factor of x raised to power 4 minus ax squared plus b. Then we have to form an equation whose roots are a and b. Now, if I factorize x squared minus 3x plus 2, I'm going to get x minus 2 and x minus 1. If the complete polynomial x squared minus 3x plus 2 is a factor of x raised to power 4 minus ax squared plus b, then we can say that x minus 2 is going to be an individual factor of this polynomial. Similarly, x minus 1 will be an individual factor of this polynomial of degree 4. So if you define f of x as x raised to power 4 minus ax squared plus b, then we can say that f of 1 is equal to 0 and f of 2 is equal to 0 because both x minus 1 and x minus 2 are factors of f of x. So what is f of 1? 1 minus a plus b and it is equal to 0. What is f of 2? It's 16 minus 4a plus b and it is equal to 0. So we have two equations, 1 minus a plus b equal to 0 and 16 minus 4a plus b equal to 0. And we have two variables. 
So if we solve these two equations, we'll get the values of A and B. And finally, the equation whose roots are given by A and B. All right. So these are the two equations. I'm going to eliminate B by subtracting these two equations. So when I subtract these two equations, B gets eliminated. What we'll get is minus 15 plus 3a equal to 0. Or we can say that 3a is equal to 15. That means a is equal to 5. Now, if I put a is equal to 5 in the equation 1 minus a plus b equal to 0, I'll get 1 minus 5 plus b equal to 0. Or we can say that b is equal to 4. So we have found out our values of A and B. Now we have to form an equation whose roots are A and B. Now we can form many equations like this or whose roots are 5 and 4. But we are looking for the equation which is given by x square minus sx plus p equal to 0 where s is the sum of the roots and p is the product of roots. So what is sum of the roots? It is equal to 5 plus 4, which is 9. And what is the product of the roots? It is equal to 5 multiplied by 4, which is equal to 20. So one equation, one such equation of many equations would be x squared minus 9x plus 20 equal to 0, which is same as option B here. So in this question, we have been given if alpha, beta, gamma be the roots of the equation given by x minus a times x minus b times x minus c equal to d, where d is not equal to 0, then we have to find out the roots of the equation given by x minus alpha times x minus beta times x minus gamma plus d equal to 0. All right. So this is the equation given to us in the question. Let me rewrite this equation by taking D from right hand side to left hand side. So what we'll get is X minus A times X minus B times X minus C minus D equal to zero. Now this equation has three roots, alpha, beta and gamma. And if I write this in factor form, what I'll get is X minus A multiplied by x minus b multiplied by x minus c minus d is equal to x minus alpha times x minus beta times x minus gamma. And from here, if I take d from left hand side to right hand side, I'll get x minus a times x minus b times x minus c is equal to x minus alpha times x minus beta times x minus gamma plus d. All right. Now in the question, it was asked that what are the roots of the equation given by x minus alpha times x minus beta times x minus gamma plus d equal to zero. So basically we have this equal to zero. Now product of three factors equal to zero means either of them can be zero. So if x minus a equal to zero, we get x is equal to a. When x minus b is equal to 0, we get x is equal to b. And when x minus c equal to 0, we get x is equal to c. All right. So we are getting three roots here, a, b, and c. And these are the three roots of the equation given by x minus alpha times x minus beta times x minus gamma plus d equal to 0. All right. Now, as you can see, that option c is the correct answer to this question. Now, in this question, we have been given that alpha, beta, gamma are the roots of the equation x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 equal to 0. Then we have to find out which of the following is or are true. All right. So this is the equation given to us in the question. It's also given that this equation has three roots, alpha, beta and gamma. Now, if alpha, beta, gamma are the roots of the equation, we can find out sum of roots taken one at a time, taken two at a time, and the product of roots. For that, we'll follow the sign convention of plus, minus, plus, minus. So what is the sum of roots taken one at a time? It's alpha plus beta plus gamma, and it is equal to minus three. 
what will be the sum of roots taken two at a time? It would be alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha and it will be equal to 4. What is the value of alpha beta gamma? It will be equal to minus 5. So we have calculated the sum of roots taken one at a time, the sum of roots taken two at a time and the product of roots. Now, let's start with option A and check for its correctness. So, we have summation of alpha is equal to 3. Now, summation of alpha means we are going to find out the value of alpha plus beta plus gamma. Now, we know that alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to minus 3. But in option A, it has been given that it is equal to 3, which is incorrect. Hence, we can say that option A is not a correct option. Moving on to option B where we have summation of 1 by alpha is equal to minus 4 by 5 and we have to check for its correctness. So we can write summation of 1 by alpha as 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta plus 1 by gamma and if we take the LCM, the LCM would be alpha beta gamma and it will be equal to beta gamma plus alpha gamma plus alpha beta whole divided by alpha beta gamma or we can say that it is equal to alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha divided by alpha beta gamma. Now we know the value of alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha it is equal to 4 and alpha beta gamma it is equal to minus 5. So if we put those two values in this equation we will get 4 divided by minus 5 which is equal to minus of 4 by 5. So we can say that 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta plus 1 by gamma is equal to minus 4 by 5 or we can say that option B is a correct option. All right. Moving on to option C where we have summation of alpha square equal to 1 and we have to check for its correctness. So if we expand summation of alpha square we get alpha square plus beta square plus gamma square and this can be written as alpha plus beta plus gamma whole square minus 2 multiplied by alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha. All right. Now, if we put the value of alpha plus beta plus gamma as minus 3 and the value of alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha as 4, what we will get is minus 3 whole square minus 2 multiplied by 4, which is equal to 9 minus 8, which is equal to 1. Hence, we can say that even option C is correct. All right. Now, moving on to option D. Summation of beta square gamma square is equal to minus 14 and we have to check for its correctness. All right. Now, we are going to follow a cyclic order to expand left hand side of this equation. So, we get beta square gamma square plus we'll get gamma square alpha square plus alpha square beta square and this is equal to alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha whole square minus 2 multiplied by alpha beta gamma multiplied by alpha plus beta plus gamma. All right. Now if I put the values of alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha and alpha beta gamma and alpha plus beta plus gamma what I'll get is 4 square minus 2 multiplied by minus 5 multiplied by minus 3 which is equal to 16 minus 30 which is equal to minus 14. Hence we can say that even option D is correct. All right. So we have options B, C and D as the correct options to this question. So in this question, we have been given a polynomial equation of degree 5 and that equation is x raised to power 5 minus x raised to power 4 plus 8x square minus 9x minus 15 equal to 0. Now the two roots of this equation are given to us and those two roots are negative square root 3 and 1 minus 2i. Where i is an imaginary number, then we have to find out the number of positive real roots. All right. So this is the equation given to us in the question. And two roots are given to us, negative square root 3 and 1 minus 2i. So we have an irrational root and a complex root given to us. 
Now, if you will observe the coefficients of this given equation, you will see that they are integers. And when we have a polynomial equation with the integral coefficients, we can say that irrational roots come in conjugate pair and complex roots also come in conjugate pair. So if minus root 3 is one of the root given to us in the question, the other root would be square root of 3. That will be its conjugate. And if 1 minus 2i is a root given to us in the question, the other root would be its conjugate and it will be 1 plus 2i. So we have four roots known to us and those are minus square root 3, square root of 3, 1 minus 2i and 1 plus 2i. Let's assume that the fifth root is alpha because we have a polynomial equation of degree 5 and it can have five roots. All right. So let's assume that the fifth root is alpha. What is sum of roots? Minus square root of 3 plus square root of 3 plus 1 minus 2i plus 1 plus 2i plus alpha. And this is equal to negative of coefficient of x raised to power 4 divided by coefficient of x raised to power 5. What is the coefficient of x raised to power 4? Minus 1. And what is the coefficient of x raised to power 5? It's 1. So what I'll get in the left hand side? Minus root 3 and plus root 3 will cancel each other. Minus 2i and plus 2i will cancel each other. We get 2 plus alpha and it is equal to minus of negative 1 divided by 1 which is equal to 1. Or we can say that alpha is equal to minus 1. How many real roots did we get? We got 3 real roots square root of 3, negative square root of 3 and minus 1. But in the question it has been asked the number of positive real roots. So how many positive real roots do we have? Only one which is square root of 3. Hence the answer to this question is 1. So in this question we have been given two equations x cubed minus x square plus x minus 1 equal to 0 and x raised to power 4 minus 1 equal to 0. Now we have to find out the number of common roots of both the equations. All right. So these are the two equations given to us in the question and we have to find out the number of common roots of these two equations. So I'm going to start with the cubic equation. If I factor out x square from the terms x cubed minus x square, I'll get x square multiplied by x minus 1 plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. I can further factor out x minus 1. So when I factor out x minus 1, I'll get x minus 1 multiplied by x square plus 1 equal to 0. All right, let's simplify x raised to power 4 minus 1 equal to 0 using the identity a square minus b square is equal to a plus b multiplied by a minus b. So what we'll get is x square minus 1 multiplied by x square plus 1 is equal to 0. If we further factorize x square minus 1 using the same identity, we'll get x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 1 multiplied by x square plus 1 is equal to 0. We have written both the equations in their factorized form. And from there, we'll see that x minus 1 is a common factor between both the equations. And x square plus 1 is a common factor between both the equations. All right. So when x minus 1 is equal to 0, we get x is equal to 1. And when x square plus 1 is equal to 0, we get x is equal to plus minus iota. Now, these are the three common roots between both the equations. So in total, how many common roots are there? Three. Hence, the answer to this question is three. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.